Bonsoir, monsieur, madame. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This evening is going to be in English. My name is Ton van der Lankruis. I'm director of the Writers Unlimited uh, Literature Organization, co-organizers of this evening. We organize this evening together with the Public Library, Openbare Bibliotheek, and Alliance Française de l'AE. Martin Beyer, où est-il? Martin. Martin, oui. C'est à vous maintenant pour introduire euh, les auteurs de ce soir. Bonsoir. Vous l'aurez compris, la soirée est en anglais et en tant que directeur de l'Alliance française, je profite pour en dire quelques mots en français quand même. Mais surtout pour remercier euh, Writers Unlimited, le festival, la centrale Stadtbibliothèque, d'ouvrir les portes à un auteur français et je dirais même deux auteurs français parce qu'il y a Laurent Binet qui vient de Paris et Ariane Cortevert, journaliste, auteur lui-même. Vous avez les livres en français et en néerlandais sur la table de la librairie Pagman à côté. Donc vous aurez l'occasion tout à l'heure d'en acheter si vous voulez. En tout cas, je vous remercie d'être venu, de partager ce moment autour de la littérature avec nous, avec l'Alliance française. Je vous invite aussi de venir nous voir à la New Alliance française qui se trouve au Berlag Cantor, à côté de Rotekerk, hein, au centre-ville. Nous venons de déménager. Donc n'hésitez pas à venir nous voir. Nous proposons, comme vous savez, des cours de français, mais aussi de néerlandais pour les francophones qui sont ici. Donc toujours à la croisée des cultures et des langues. Et au mois de mars, il y a un grand festival de théâtre en langue française. Ça sera au théâtre New de Gerentes à Weimarstraat. Et puis au mois d'avril, il y a le concours de la chanson française. Grand concours depuis 30 ans. Ça sera au théâtre Diligencia. Donc... Euh, N'hésitez pas à nous contacter pour le programme. Merci encore une fois, Bibliothèque de la Haye, euh, le Festival Writers Unlimited, et merci surtout aux deux auteurs, Ariane Korteweg et Laurent Binet, que je voudrais donc demander de se présenter sur scène. Merci beaucoup. Mesdames, Messieurs, bonsoir. C'est le dernier que j'ose dire en français. Euh, iedereen een goede avond. Euh, we hebben dus afgesproken in het Engels euh, verder te gaan. We continue in English. Um, my name is Arjan Korteweg. I've been the correspondent for the Dutch newspaper, de Volkskrant, for six years in Paris, until last summer. And now I'm working at the politics desk, desk in, the, in The Hague. And... Um, Next to me, Laurent Binet. Uh, maybe I don't even need to introduce him to you because apart from France, his book was best sold in the Netherlands. 100,000 um, uh, books, thank you very much. And um, so I, I think you sort of know him. He, he was born in 72. He's been a teacher. He's been a teacher in Bratislava. He's been a teacher in France as well. He even wrote a book about it, La Vie Professionnelle de Laurent B, that still waits to be translated. So there's still some work to do for Molenhof. Um, then he became world famous with HHHH. A, a book about um, two, two very uh, brave young uh, people, one from uh, Czechia, the other from Slovakia, who um, finally killed uh, Reinhard Heydrich. And then he published another book, um, which is called um, Rien ne se passe comme prévu. En néerlandais, ça veut dire. Dat is in het Nederlands, even kijken hoor. Niets gaat zoals verwacht. En um, the, the special thing about it, the first international language in which it was translated, was Dutch. 
So uh, if you would like to, you could applaud for yourself because we are very um, strong supporters for Laurent Binet. And we start off, um, to, to give you an overview of this evening, um, we start off with talking about HHHH. We have some visual fragments. Um, then we move on to Niets gaat zoals verwacht, je ne pas comme prévu. And also with, with some visual uh, parts in it. And finally, we try to combine the two of them. We'll see if we manage. And um, after one hour of talking, the floor is yours. And um, you can ask some questions. And after that, um, we're more than willing to dedicate books, of course. Um, so we start off with, with, um, with a fragment that um, Laurent himself picked from HHHH. Up to you. Julie? Oui. Shall I read? D'accord. Okay, so well, um, hello. Uh, I'll read a chapter from HHHH. I'll read it in French and it will be... It will be uh, translated. Okay, so... In English. Let's go. Fabrice me rend visite et me parle de mon futur livre. C'est un vieux copain de fac qui, comme moi, se passionne pour l'histoire et qui, entre autres qualités, a celle de s'intéresser à ce que j'écris. Ce soir d'été, nous mangeons sur ma terrasse et il me commente le début avec un enthousiasme encourageant. Il s'arrête sur la construction du chapitre concernant la nuit des longs couteaux. Cet enchaînement de coups de téléphone, selon lui, restitue bien à la fois la dimension bureaucratique et le traitement à la chaîne de ce qui fera la marque du nazisme, le meurtre. Je suis flatté, cependant j'ai un soupçon et crois bon de préciser. Mais tu sais que chaque coup de téléphone correspond à un cas réel, je pourrais te retrouver presque tous les noms si je voulais. Il est surpris et me répond ingénument qu'il croyait que j'avais inventé. Vaguement inquiet, je lui demande « et pour Strasser ?» Heydrich qui se déplace en personne donnant ordre de laisser agoniser le mourant dans sa cellule, ça aussi il pensait que j'avais inventé. Je suis un peu mortifié et je m'exclame « mais non, tout est vrai ». Et je pense « putain, c'est pas gagné, j'aurais dû être plus clair au niveau du pack de lecture ». Ce même soir, je regarde à la télé un documentaire sur un vieux film hollywoodien consacré au général Patton. Le film est sobrement intitulé « Patton ». L'essentiel du documentaire consiste à montrer des extraits du film, puis à interviewer des témoins qui expliquent « En fait, ça ne s'est pas passé comme ça. Il n'a pas fait face à deux Messer Schmitt en train de canarder la base, armé de son seul colt, mais nul doute selon le témoin qu'il l'aurait fait si les Messer Schmitt lui en avaient laissé le temps. Il n'a pas tenu tel propos devant toute l'armée, mais en privé, et d'ailleurs il n'a pas dit ça. Il n'a pas appris au dernier moment qu'il allait être envoyé en France, mais en avait été informé plusieurs semaines à l'avance. » Il n'a pas désobéi aux ordres lorsqu'il a pris Palerme, mais l'a fait avec l'aval du haut commandement allié et de son chef direct. Il n'a certainement pas dit à un général russe d'aller se faire foutre, même s'il n'aimait pas les Russes, etc. Bref, le film parle d'un personnage fictif dont la vie est fortement inspirée par la carrière de Patton, mais qui manifestement n'est pas lui. Et pourtant, le film s'intitule Patton. Et ça ne choque personne. Tout le monde trouve ça normal, bidouiller la réalité pour faire mousser un scénario ou donner une cohérence à la trajectoire d'un personnage dont le parcours réel comportait sans doute trop de chaos hasardeux et pas assez lourdement signifiant. C'est à cause de ces gens-là, qui trichent de toute éternité avec la vérité historique pour vendre leur soupe, qu'un vieux camarade rompu à tous les genres fictionnels et donc fatalement habitué à ces procédés de falsification tranquille peut s'étonner innocemment et me dire « Ah bon, c'est pas inventé ?» Non, ce n'est pas inventé. Quel intérêt d'ailleurs y aurait-il à inventé du nazisme. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we're right in the middle of the subject. C'est pas inventé. The, the, the book is not invented. What made you pick this special uh, fragment? Why? Uh, because, I mean, it, that, that was, I think, um, Talking about the the main point of the book, you know, like uh, the 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 um, what was at stake with uh, H H H H, which I discovered after I started, you know, to to uh, to write the story. Uh, it was important for me. It was a true story, you know, and I I wanted to stress that point. Uh, but then, 
um, quite quickly I discovered it's very complicated to, 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 to write a, a true story. <coughs> and it became the, the, the main subject of the book, I mean, in parallel with, uh, with uh, the, the story of Heydrich and uh, the killing of Heydrich. Uh, the main question was how to tell a how to tell a true story, you know. Um, and so um, uh, it happened that I, I discovered it was very complicated. And I, I um, you know, any time I had um, I, I had to to um, uh, to stand on sources, you know. But then any time I had a testimony from a witness. And if there was another witness, I discovered they disagreed together. So it was, I discovered that telling a true story was hell, you know. And, um, and uh, instead of, so then as I didn't want to cheat, uh, I wanted to share with, uh, with the readers uh, the, the, everything I'm talking to you right now. Uh, and uh, I thought the best way was to, um, to, to, to share the doubts, the questions. And this chapter is one example of the, the, the problems I was wondering and I was facing. So I thought maybe this ch chapter was a good introduction. And how did it work during the writing? Did you have the structure of the book alternating the, the, the story and your own reflections and your, your, uh, your own events? Um, did, you, did you figure out that structure from the beginning or did it come after you had completed uh, the book? No, actually, I mean, very quickly, uh, I, uh, I started to comment my own uh, story, you know. Uh, I didn't plan it before, but after a couple of chapters, I felt like talking about it, you know, about the problems and uh, of the, the st storytelling. Uh, but uh, I had the big picture in mind, of course, because, I mean, it's, as it is a true story, I knew uh, how it would end. <laughs> and, uh, but I didn't know um, what I would discover and, um, and what I would think about. What, so um, I had the big picture, but not the details of the structure. I just thought that um, it... I would have to find the balance between the story and the, 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 what I call the, the, the meta, you know, the meta novel or the, the, the comments, let's say the comments. It's, it's all the story and the comments. And I thought a good balance wouldn't be 50-50, but something like, you know, uh, three quarters, one quarter or two thirds. And uh, two thirds for the story. For and the story, and, yeah, yeah, and, and one third for one third. And at the end, I think that was the balance, you know, one third of those kind of chapters, commenting, you know, or uh, close to um, closer to some essay, essay yeah, than yeah. more than really novel, you know. Uh, but then my publisher, my editor, believed that. I can cut the comments. So we had a kind of a sort of a fight. I mean, not a fight, but hard negotiation. <laughs> he wanted me to cut a lot of comments. I Which is in the book, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you uh, describe yeah. it in the uh, book. Well, because, I mean, he, he uh, also changed my title, which pissed me off at that time. But then I'm happy <laughs> because, I mean, I like the title now. But, well, so, I mean, he, it was, uh, yeah, we... we, we, we struggled and we worked together and uh, I cut a lot of, um, not a lot, but some comments and the final result, I think I would say it's something like the, the final result comes to the third quart, quarter uh, uh, with one quarter of comments, you know, so I, I reduced, he made me reducing the, the comments. Uh, and I, I told him, but well, but if you suppress the comments, then the, all the, the, the uh, specificity, you can say yeah, that. Specificity yeah. of the book uh, will be lost, you know. And he told me, don't worry, uh, uh, enough will remain. I mean, uh, there, so there in the will... end, he gave you confidence. He... Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think he, I mean, yeah, I think he was right. I think I, um, uh, I'm glad with the, 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 the final balance, you know. Because and in the I'm beginning, you too... exaggerated. Sorry? In the beginning, you exaggerated. I, I have to say, I could be. Um, um, 
Yeah, too, too, too much uh, talkative or bavard, how, how you would say mm -hmm. bavard, you know, uh, like. Um, bavard. Uh, yeah, talkative is fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just, so sometimes, for instance, I mean, a good example is about the Kindly Ones, you know, that, that book about the Second World War, the fake memoir of an SS officer. It was yeah. a huge success in France, and it was really... Yeah. Uh, Uh, it was a big deal in France, that book, and um, it disturbed me when it was out because I felt like, uh, like um, the, 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 for many reasons, it disturbed me. But then I was, the, the time I was reading the book, it took me one week, 10 days. It's a huge book, like almost 1,000 pages. And uh, I was writing every, every evening a chapter about what I read on, uh, <laughs> in this book. So I... It was like a diary of my reading of The Kindly Ones, yeah, you know. Uh, uh. And uh, it was maybe like 20, 30 pages about it. And so he made me uh, uh, suppress uh, most of the, those parts. And I think he yeah. was right. And because, fairly enough, he, he made me... Um, uh, keeping one sentence which... Yeah. Uh, re, um, um, Which made the uh, which made the the synthesis of all those 30 pages, uh, which, which was is? which was uh, 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 the kindly was. Uh, it's like Welbeck does Schellen, Nazis. Uh, uh, so, yeah, and uh, yeah. I think the the, the he the, it was the main idea I wanted yeah. to express about that book. So it was fine, you know. It was a fine critic in in one sentence. Uh, so this, talking about Jonathan Little, uh, Le Bienveillant. I don't know what the De welwillende, in Nederland, in, in Dutch. Um, I think that must have been a very important book for you, because in a way it does the opposite of what you intended to do, and did it in, in a way a sharpen your mind. Yes, did it yes. help you? Yes, I mean, it was interesting. I mean, I'm, I have a lot of uh, criticism uh, against that book, but in a way, I mean, it was interesting, and it's definitely not what I want to do. But it is, um, I think, still it is a work. Um, it is a work with problem, you know, because, I mean, uh, in fact, that book, the, the problem was more with the reception of the book than with the book it, it, in itself. Because in yeah. France, people started to say, and even uh, journalists, but not only, you know, even uh, uh, somebody like uh, Georges Semprun, Georges Georg, Semprun. He wrote something like, if you want to understand the Nazis, just read this book. You don't mm -hmm. need any other book and no history book. And I think he was really, really wrong. I mean, you can't understand what is Nazism. I don't, it's, anyway, I don't know how you can understand Nazism, but what, what, I'm, what I'm sure is you can't understand with a fake memoir of a fictional SS, you know, like you can understand what is in uh, Jonathan Little's mind, but not what was in uh, Nazi's mind, you uh -huh. know. So it's, yeah, it was, um, he did it well, obviously, because everybody believed that, okay, now we, we, we understand the key of Nazism with that book, you know, but I think it's a mistake, and so it disturbed me, yes. And the, the one thing Jonathan Little does is get into the, trying to get into the head Yeah, Nazi yeah. This officers. is what I this is what I didn't and want. I mean, because I uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't know how to do it, you know. And so I avoided uh, carefully in all the book uh, uh, to um, to use some something called uh, in French the monologue in interior in interior monologue monologue interior. Yeah, ça c'est néerlandais. That, that's Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, because I think it's, um, it's, it's, it's a trick which can be very well done. I mean, as Jonathan Little did, uh, he did a good job, obviously. But it's just a trick. I mean, just like it's, um, it's, like, uh, it's, it's like a coup de force, you know, like a yeah. coup de yeah. force. On the, you're cheating the reader, you know, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you pretend you can read in the in the mind of anybody actually you know it's cheating so when it's a love story it's it's it's, it's interesting i mean it's it's maybe not that uh, disturbing but, but when it's about history when it's about nazis 
um, yeah, I think I think it's a problem, you know. And be so, be the, so uh, the the th that's also why I'm so um, I as uh, the author uh, I'm so uh, present in the book because as I didn't want to think instead of the characters, you know, uh, if I didn't think uh, myself and I didn't show what I'm thinking of, uh, it would be very. Um, the, the result uh, could be uh, um, quite um, uh, only with facts, could yeah. be a bit empty, you know. Yeah. So uh, you, 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 when you read my book, uh, um, uh, unlike Jonathan Little's book, you don't uh, read uh, Nazi's mind, but you read my mind. <laughs> because that's the one thing you don't. You, 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 you go everywhere. You visit a lot of places, but the one place you don't go is you don't enter into the head of the main characters of your book. Because I don't know how to do that, you know. I mean, I hardly know uh, what I'm thinking myself, so uh, how to know what <laughs> other people think, you know. I just, yeah, I mean, this is, I think this is, uh, as a writer or as a so-called novelist, I think it is a, a, a lack of something, you know. Uh, but then, I mean, like... You know, it's like when you <coughs> when you play when you play tennis. You know, you 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 try to play with uh, your strength and uh, not with your weakness. Uh, maybe it's a weakness, you know. But as I know that I'm not quite uh, easy with that, I just don't try to do it. You know. And anyway, I have to say I'm quite suspectful with other writers when they do it. You know, like Jonathan Little. I mean, when. I don't know, I mean, when, uh, with... Um, but, but on the other, other hand, it's what you do in, in everyday conversation. You try to enter into one another's mind to, to, to find out yes, what they meaning, so you have exercise all day. That's true, yeah, you, uh, you're absolutely right, that's true, but uh, what, what, what I do, what you do, what everybody does in the daily life is uh, trying to guess, you know. And so, and this is... From time to time, I, get, I try to guess, you know, yeah. uh, but, but I say it this way, you know, I, I wonder what Heydrich could think at that time. Maybe he could think that or that or that. But I'm not using that trick, uh, which is to, 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 to blur the, the lines, you know, and saying, yeah. I, I, Heydrich, I will tell you what I thought about uh, life and faith and everything and Jews and uh, everything you want, you know. So um, this is more, I think, Humble, uh, uh, as far as a writer can be humble, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, like, just to 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 tell you that, I guess maybe you know maybe he thought that, but not like, you know, pretending that I am I am the evil, I am Heidrich, and I will tell you exactly what I thought at that time, you know. So um, yeah, this is the. And and did did you f did you. F feel the intention to, in the meantime, try to explain why they did what they did. And if you did, how did you try it? Well, uh, actually, not really. Uh, not really, because, I mean, my starting point was not uh, Heydrich and was not the Nazis and why was not to understand the roots of evil, but it was really that uh, heroic, heroic act, action, that... Heroic, yeah. Uh, uh, um, act of bravery, which was that uh, yeah. that assassi that uh, plan to uh, to kill Heydrich, you know, and that's why the the original title should have been Operation Anthropoid, Anthropoid Operation, which was yeah. the name of the operation decided in England, the historical name, you know, uh, because I wanted to focus on that operation. But then I have to admit that I was a bit. Uh, amazed and in a way fascinated by the career of Heydrich, you know, he had, uh, I mean, that, that little boy who was mocked because people believed uh, he was a Jew and uh, growing, becoming uh, the, the chief of the SS and uh, in charge of the final solution. Yeah. It was, uh, it, th that was, uh, that was a destiny, you know. Uh, and, you know, like that ideal uh, Nazi, tall, blonde, violinist, you know, like the, the Nazi, the, the Nazi, the Nazis themselves uh, were dreaming of, you know, and they were not so much, you know, because, I mean, Hitler, Himmler, Goebbels, they were 
they were uh, uh, dark hair, small, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, not, not, yeah. not Aryans, I mean, not Germans, actually, you know. Heidrich looked different from them. Yeah, yeah. So it yeah. was really the, 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 the dream of the Nazis, you know. So it was, yeah, I mean, he had, uh, in a, he was a character, you know, he was really an interesting yeah. character. Yeah. And then the result... Uh, I was a bit pissed off when the, the, my publisher changed the title uh, from uh, Operation Anthropoid to HHHH. But I think it was fair because I, I was pissed off because it focused more on HHHH, Himmler's Hirn, Heist, Heidrich. Uh, it focused more on Heidrich than on the, the heroes, you know. Yeah. But if you read the book, you have to, you have to, yeah. you, you can see that all the first part of the book is j almost just about Heydrich career, you know. Sure so enough. it's yeah. it's logical in a way that the title uh, shows that uh, the, uh, the the main character. Yeah. Uh, it's not he's not the hero of the story, but he's the main character of uh, of the book. Maybe this is a moment to show the fragment that was prepared. As the Gestapo's chief from 1934, Heydrich made it an instrument of terror. At its peak, it had 45,000 staff, but it fed off a huge network of spies and informers. Propaganda films encouraged citizens to report to the Gestapo the slightest expression of disloyalty to the Reich. Heydrich, as head of the Gestapo, was doing exactly what the Führer wished. In fact, Heydrich was even outshining his boss, Himmler. SS comrades joked, Himmler's brain is called Heydrich. While the SS carried out his orders, Heydrich found time to enjoy frequent holidays with his wife, Lena, and their children. What applied to Heydrich applied to others, too. He was like Himmler. Like Hers, the commander at the Auschwitz concentration camp, they were caring fathers. People close to them didn't see the cruelty and inhumanity in them. Utterly convinced that he was in the right, Heydrich was undisturbed by guilt or pity. He maintained his happy family life as he unleashed his relentless campaign of terror across Europe. Okay, as you can see, it's very old footage, so uh, hesitates a bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, some some pictures I didn't. I, uh, you didn't know. I didn't know yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, because that's one of the aspects of the, of the, of the history of, of the, the murder of Heydrich is that it's already very well known. There's been a lot of films about it. There's been books about it. There's been studies about it. Why then did you, you, you pick this story? Because you knew people can control what I wrote, people, maybe some of them know already how it will end, so. Well, um, first it was not that, uh, it is interesting because Heydrich really, I mean, is a, is a key man, is, is a very important man in the Third Reich history and uh, really, I mean, in my opinion, he was really the key man because at every stage of the Third Reich, uh, the, the third, third Reich history, you find him, you know, like yeah. 34, the Knight of the Long Knives, he's in charge. 38, Kristallnacht, he's in charge. Uh, Chief of the Gestapo, uh, the, the final solution, he's in charge. You know, so um, the Einsatzgruppen, he creates it. Um, so he's a very important man, and also uh, because because he died in '42, uh, he was much less famous than uh, Eichmann, for for instance. Eichmann, which was one of his right hands, you know, even even not his main right hand, you know, mm. because of you know, I mean, the story of Eichmann, because of uh, the trial in Jerusalem and the, the all the. the publicity about, around Eichmann. So uh, Heydrich was not that famous in France, at least. And uh, his story, um, I mean, I heard his, uh, the, the story of his uh, assassination because my father was a history teacher. He told me 
really the 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 the, the big picture of it, but with uh, I didn't know any details, you know. And when I was sent in Slovakia for my military service, I discovered I I asked about that story and I discovered the first details and the, f the first details like the the machine gun who jammed, which jammed, or uh, the 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 assault against the the, the crypt and the, the, the Germans who called the firemen to drone the, 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 the parachutists, you know. Um, it sounded, uh, uh, in, France, in French we would say romanesque, you know, like yeah. it sounded uh, as a story, you know, I mean, interesting uh, uh, as a story and amazing details. And so it was a story that captured you. Yes, yes, I thought it was an amazing story. And the more I asked for details, the more I got amazing details, you know. So yeah. at some point I thought this story is not that famous in, in France and I believe in Western Europe. So I want to, I want, um, I, I think my first motivation, uh, it's very complicated to, to, to know why you write a book, why you write about a story. But my first motivation was to, to uh, something like uh, to, to give some homage uh, to, yeah. to, the, to the parachutist, yeah. you know. But, um, and, and you thought this story is so strong, you don't need to add anything to yeah, it. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, yeah, I think, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, why? But, but I, I think it would, uh, it, it would make it less strong if you, I mean, if you start to mix, you know, um, but, uh, Real and fiction. Then I mean, it's, uh, uh, but, and, and I have I have some friends. They, they don't mind. They just want a, a good story. You know, whatever if it's uh, it's true or not. But I know I, I love many fictional stories, of course. But I know is uh, what I know is I don't don't feel the same with the story if I know it's true or not. You know, I mean, it's and I'm more impressed if I if I know that some guy he killed one Nazi. If it's true, then some guy killed 10 Nazis if I know it's just a Hollywood uh, movie, you know. So it's as simple as that, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, I mean, now I'm just thinking loudly about all the problem I will have with the adaptation because it should be, um, it should be a movie. The, the Did you persuade Paul Verhoeven? No, I didn't. Uh, no, because I, didn't. I know you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, I would be very happy if it was him, but it's, uh, it shouldn't be him. But I, I read the first uh, draft of the, the, the script, you know, and uh, I feel that, yeah, of course, I mean, they, they, they did it for Hollywood and there, would be, there will be some changes, you know, yeah. and uh, it makes me uh, a bit, I mean, I'm very happy that I will see the, the big Hollywood movie about that story. Yeah. But in, in another hand, it makes me a bit upset that when, when the, the, the script writer changes uh, things for... For what? I don't know, you know, I mean, because as you said, the, the, the story is amazing enough, you know. But you will tell him, I'm sure. Yeah, I, to well, stick to we the truth. exchange uh, mails <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> be, be, because according to, uh, until you came but, along, we thought uh, uh, literature and lying are best friends, in a way. Yeah, and, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, you come to tell us they, they don't go together. No, I mean, they, they are not, they don't have to be enemies, but they don't have to be friends. I mean, it's two different things, you know, like literature, novel, fiction. Three worlds, three different things. It can work together, but it doesn't have to. We'll move on to the, to the next uh, book. Uh, Rien ne se passe comme prévu. Was um, <laughs> Niets gaat zoals verwacht. Nothing uh, happens. As According to the as, plan. As foreseen, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a book about the, the campaign of uh, François Hollande, the, the huidige president, uh, the, the, pre <laughs> Not yet. the president of, uh, of, of France, um, until 2017 at least. Um, and, uh, who knows? <laughs> who knows? And Laurent Binet um, decided to follow his uh, campaign for the election in 2012, and we, we start off with your, the fragment you picked. Okay. <coughs> 5 November. Don't fear and loathing on the campaign trail 72, 
Hunter S. Thompson, l'auteur de Las Vegas Parano, inventeur du journalisme Gonzo, écrit à propos de la question de l'objectivité journalistique « Ne vous fatiguez pas à en chercher ici, ni dans aucune ligne écrite par moi ou à ma connaissance par qui que ce soit. Mis à part éventuellement les tableaux de résultats sportifs ou les graphiques des cours de la bourse, une chose telle que le journalisme objectif n'existe pas. L'expression en elle-même est une pompeuse contradiction dans les termes. Je suis un prof qui a enseigné dix ans en ZEP et c'est en tant que tel que j'observe consterné avec quelle timidité, quel manque d'entrain, quel air de celui qui a parlé trop vite et qui ne sait pas comment reprendre sa parole, Hollande répond aux attaques de la droite qui moque l'irréalisme budgétaire de sa proposition de recréer 60 000 malheureux postes d'enseignants. De tout ce que j'ai entendu depuis le début sur le programme socialiste, et Dieu sait qu'avec la primaire on en a bouffé du programme socialiste, c'est pour moi la seule mesure de gauche concrète, immédiatement identifiable, de surcroît hautement symbolique. Or, ce soir, je regarde Moscovici débattre avec Bruno Le Maire à la télévision. Comme d'habitude, celui-ci lui demande des comptes sur ses déjà mythiques, à défaut d'être effectifs, 60 000 profs. Mais cette fois-ci, son interlocuteur ne semble pas sur la défensive. Il répond au contraire d'un ton assuré. « J'assume complètement la proposition faite par François Hollande de créer 60 000 postes d'enseignants. Je pense même que c'est une cause mobilisatrice. » Et il, lui oppose, et il lui oppose les 30 000 gardiens de prison supplémentaires prévus par la droite. Prof versus gardien de prison, c'est beau comme du Victor Hugo. Me voilà un peu rassuré. Si vous voulez de l'objectivité, il y a les résultats sportifs. Voilà. Thank you very much. So it's not an objective uh, book. Um, uh, uh, three, four years ago, After uh, HHHH um, was published, um, we spoke in Paris in, in a cafe that was called Le Reflet, and after that in, in another cafe that was called LS, and um, in, in the Sorbonne, uh, in the Quartier Latin in, uh, in Paris, and you said, my next book will be fiction. I'm working on it, and um, one of the scenes in the book will be located in this cafe. And um, That's it's a fiction, but I'll start off from real people. I work with real people. After that, this book was <laughs> published, and I thought, is, <laughs> is this finally no. your fiction book? <laughs> no, no, it was a kind of a parenthèse. Uh, no, actually, I wrote the chapter in that cafe. Uh, in which one, the first or the second? Uh, the second, second, second cafe. Uh, And it will be in my next book. But so this one, it was a kind of a break, you know, between two big works. I mean, the, the HHHH, it took me 10 years uh, to write it. Hopefully, the next one uh, will take me less, but still <laughs> years. Uh, this one, it was, yeah, like a break. You know, I, it took me just the, the eight months I was following the campaign. So yeah. it's, it, is, it was not that book I was talking about. I mean, that, uh, I guess when, I, when we met, I... I, I Um, I didn't have the idea of that book yet, you know. No. Uh, the, I got the idea um, while uh, I was watching uh, The West Wing, the TV show, you know, the American TV show about the, the uh, American president staff in the yep. White House. Yep. Uh, actually, uh, uh, this is my ex-girlfriend, Natasha, who told me, uh, who liked the show and who told me... Uh, Yeah, I would like to see it in real, you know. And I thought, yeah, me too. And I thought, well, there is a campaign next year. So why not uh, asking uh, one candidate to follow him? Now, I thought about what, what, what do these two books have in common? And it, it took me some time. And then <laughs> finally... Apart I, from the age. Uh, apart from the age. And then finally the age of Hollande, yeah. <laughs> and then finally I thought it's... Both books are about people that want to change the destiny of their country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it work like that for you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, no, I didn't think... Um, uh, I, I, not really, actually. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think about the comparison between Hollande and Heidrich. <laughs> Or even I mean, it's not. It's definitely not at the same level because the, the what what is at stake is, is very different. You know, like in uh, in one hand uh, the the 
the, the, the Nazism and the war and the extermination of millions of people. On another hand, who will pay the more taxes or not? It's, it's, it's not exactly the same level. But in a way, you're right. Uh, at least, I mean, um, what is in common? It's in both cases, it's a true story. And it is, you're right, um, even if it's not at the same level, they are both about history. It's true. I mean, history uh, in the making. History, yeah. I mean, the, the, the campaign, it was, yeah, the present history, but it, it is history. I mean, uh, Hollande, even if for some French people it's hard to believe, will become uh, a historical character, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so uh, this is a true story. This is about history. And this is about um, being faithful to the facts uh, in both cases. Uh, what is different is the method, you know, uh, like in HHHH, I was reading tons, tons of books, you know, and uh, um, with uh, Holland, it was more as, as your job, you know, it was more the job of a journalist, you know, like, and it was, in a way, it was more fun because uh, it was more lively, you know, I was on the field following yeah. him, you know, yeah. trying to catch the right, uh, the right train, the, not missing the plane and uh, <laughs> uh, being close to, to him to hear uh, if uh, in a, a, um, by chance he would say something amazing, you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, so it was. That's what you say in the book. I try to follow Hollande, but if I want to find out where he is, I have to read the newspapers. Yeah. That's what you write in the book. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it was very, I mean, the, following the campaign was very interesting about politics, but also about, about your, your job, actually, yeah. about uh, what does it mean being a journalist, you know, and how, how the journalists work. Uh, what they do good, what they do bad. It was, uh, and 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 it was that um, again uh, the the meta dimension of the book. You know, like uh, uh, again there was that kind of uh, me, uh, meta analyze or meta speech, yeah. like uh, how you uh, like following the, the 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 politics in the making, but also I mean how. The, 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 the storytelling of the politics is created, yeah. you know, so, and that was, that I didn't suspect it uh, at the beginning, but it was very, very interesting. And the one thing, and one of the things the books have in common is that in the end, you are also part of what's happening all the time. So you're in the action, you, you, you describe your own points of view, you describe um, your hesitations, yeah, the well, choices you make, and actually, I mean, I'm, I'm in, in a way, I'm much more involved with the book about Holland because, I mean, th there is no, there is no real uh, political issue with HHHH. I mean, we, we all know who are the bad guys, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the, the with the Holland, it was, um, yeah, it was more complicated and more lively in a way, even if the stakes were lower. Uh, the, I was more passionate about all the topics discussed, yeah. you know, I mean, the, the, how many teachers they, he, he will create or destroy, or, uh, and <laughs> the taxes and uh, the, the, the right, the left, you know, I mean, this is, uh, this is also very French. We are so passionate about politics, you know, like just, in the, yeah. the, you, you know how it works, like a lunch yeah. or a dinner with French people, we just were well, arguing for hours and hours. Yeah. So, so we, lo we love that, yeah. The, 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 in the fragment that you, that you, that you read, um, you tell about Hunter Thompson, and you say there's no such things as objectivity in this kind of action. Um, and in the beginning of the book, you describe yourself um, as some sort of football fan following politics. So you, 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 you take sides. You, it's in the beginning of the book, so it's still Hollande against uh, Aubry in the, in the primaries. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was interesting. There's yeah. no such things as objectivity. In this, at the same moment, you say, but you have to stick to the facts. How do they, these two go together? Not being objective and sticking to the facts. Well, I mean, it's just uh, you, you, <laughs> you don't have to, I mean, you, you still, uh, you can be involved and still not lying and still not, you know, I mean, just uh, when, like, I mean. You pick your facts. 
No, 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 even not. I mean, th that's, I mean, it's, uh, I think, I mean, my way was to, to go through, again, to go through the, that meta way, you know, like when I felt that, that I am not objective, I, an, I analyzed myself, you know, and I yeah. realized that, I mean, it was very clear in my mind that uh, uh, I knew very clearly why I am for Hollande against Sarkozy. Now, today, it would be more complicated to explain. <laughs> but at that time, it was very clear in my mind. It's very clear in my mind uh, what is the difference between left and, and right. But that first round between two left socially, so-called socialist candidates, uh, I, I decided to follow uh, Hollande. He was uh, challenging Aubry, or ch Aubry was challenging him, whatever. And I realized that then I was losing uh, more than my objectivity, you know, but really my, even my honesty, because I felt like charging a lot Aubry, despite she was, I think, uh, closer to my ideas, yeah. because I chose to... Be, this is the, the... In this way, I felt like a stupid football supporter, you know, like why you support this team and not this team just because, because what? Because you are born here? I mean, it's, it's nonsense, you know? So, and at, at that time, you know, why support... Why to support Hollande more than Aubry? I felt like just I was supporting him because I was next to him, with him, following him. Yeah. And even, uh, I mean, I had personal interest <laughs> in his victory, you know, because <laughs> if he didn't, if he, if he lost against Sarkozy, maybe the book would exist, you know, mm -hmm. because the, the, there would be the story of the campaign and the end would be the defeat. Of all against all odds. But the, the, the first round, it was just after one month, two months, it would end for Hollande, and so the, there, there would be no book, you know. Yeah. So then, yeah, I mean, it, I was involved in a bad way, you know, like yeah. in, uh, just, I had personal interest, which is not good, of course, of course, and which made me uh, l losing a part of my honesty, I think. But what I did to... Um, correct that fact, you know, uh, as, I, as, as I do always, I just talked about it, everything I tell you now, I wrote a chapter about it, and the, the yeah. conclusion why, was, uh, why am I hating so much Martine Aubry, you know, I mean, she, she, <laughs> she did nothing wrong to me, you know? <laughs> and I think, yeah, I mean, you're right to, uh, I'm not sure, I, I, yeah, maybe uh, I, I um, I mentioned that, that word support, supporter, but uh, I'm not sure I mentioned that football fan idea, you know. But you're right. This is this is that, you know, like this is something not rational. Yeah, like, I think this is the moment to to go to the first uh, visual fragment. Uh, this is the second. <laughs> you spoiled this the, is end. the second. <laughs> <laughs> the first fragment is uh, is the, the 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 one debate they had on television, Sarkozy and Hollande. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's on the second of May, and at that moment, I think. François Hollande, quel président comptez-vous right. être? Un président qui d'abord respecte les Français, qui les considère. Un président qui ne veut pas être président de tout, chef de tout et en définitive responsable de rien. Moi, président de la République, je ne serai pas le chef de la majorité. Je ne recevrai pas les parlementaires de la majorité à l'Élysée. Moi, président de la République, je ne traiterai pas mon Premier ministre de collaborateur. Moi, président de la République, je ne participerai pas à des collectes de fonds pour mon propre parti, dans un hôtel parisien. Moi, président de la République, je ferai fonctionner la justice de manière indépendante. Je ne nommerai pas les membres du parquet, alors que l'avis du Conseil supérieur de la magistrature n'a pas été dans ce sens. Moi, président de la République, je n'aurai pas la prétention de nommer les directeurs des chaînes de télévision publique. Je laisserai ça à des instances indépendantes. Moi, président de la République, je ferai en sorte que mon comportement soit à chaque instant exemplaire. Moi, président de la République, j'aurai aussi à cœur de ne pas avoir un statut pénal du chef de l'État. Je le ferai réformer. De façon à ce que si des actes antérieurs à ma prise de fonction venaient à être contestés, je puisse, dans certaines conditions, me rendre 
à la convocation de tel ou tel magistrat ou euh, m'expliquer devant un certain nombre d'instances. Moi, euh, président de la République, je constituerai un gouvernement qui sera paritaire, autant de femmes que d'hommes. Moi, président de la République, il y aura un code de déontologie. Uh, we, we can go on till um, tomorrow morning because he, he keeps going on for hours and hours. 13 or 14 times. Yeah. Uh, no, it's. Uh, but maybe uh, we have more to do. So uh, it's going to end. But uh, yeah. So what's interesting, of course, yeah, of course, it's funny two years after to to compare the you know the promises and the and the result. But I think uh, what is interesting is. Uh, that uh, I, I met him uh, at the end of that debate, you know, and uh, everybody understood that it was, uh, it was uh, um, um, an important moment, that, that sequence, that... Uh, the, the, the do, do you consider it as a, as a knockout? Uh, well, a kind of, yeah, a kind of. I think uh, what he said was interesting. He said that, I mean, yeah, you're right to use that word because it is the... It, in France, we feel it really as a as a heavy heavyweight um, box match, you know. And um, and uh, at that time, what he said is, uh, he, he told his friends, and I was here. He said, like everybody congratulated him about that part. Yes, like moi président, and then he's going and going and going. And he said, yes, uh, the deal is he wanted to. Um, um, not to stop, you know, like when you, when you punch, you punch, you punch. You don't want to stop until the, the, the guy is down. And he said that, yes, I mean, uh, he, he, uh, he didn't interrupt me. So uh, yeah. as long as he, yeah. he wasn't interrupting me, I didn't want to leave the, the you know, the, my, the, the, uh, my advantage, you know. And he, he, confessed, he, he confessed that after a while, he, he didn't know what to say more, you know, he had no idea about <laughs> what he would do as a president, you know, as moi president, what could I do more? But just, <laughs> so what is interesting is at, at some point, uh, the, 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 what was at stake was not um, the, 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 the ideas, but just like, just not to, uh, not to release the, the, like, like a dog biting, you know, his, uh, yeah. his uh, opponent, you know, like, so he, he knew that he had to, uh, to continue. And if you listen, uh, it's, it's hard to listen what he says because it's like a song, you know, like it's, uh, but if you listen, you, you can, you, you can, uh, you can um, find that it's less and less important what he's saying. And, you know, at the end, it's like, would, like uh, moi, président de la République, je deviendrai végétarien. Or I would, you know, like uh, it's it's really yeah, no. and, and, and <laughs> less and less relevant. But yeah. but the, but it, it was a kind of knockout, yeah, and, and the most Knock, knockdown at least. Yeah. yeah. And, and the most he, astonishing uh, thing is he kept all his promises. <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, what was of your role? Where were you that's when when story. where were you when he? Um, he was on television. Uh, what, what happened to you at the, at the same time? I was, I, I was in, the, in the building uh, with uh, all his uh, team, you know, uh, and they were... Yeah, that, the, the, this was the, the scenes I, I liked the most uh, because, yeah, it was so interesting to analyze in terms of um, enunciation, you know, uh, who is talking to who. Uh, because um, his friends, they were watching TV, of course, they were watching him on TV. And it was very interesting because uh, everybody was talking, but at a different level, you know. He was talking to Sarkozy, but his uh, lieutenants, his team, they were, um, they were talking to him, to the TV, you know, or to Sarkozy, or to uh, trying to tell him, uh, commenting him, like, yeah, well done, or, but also uh, talking directly to Sarkozy, well, bullshit, what are you saying, or things like that, you know. And talking together to Alonso, so, so it, it, it was very interesting. All that mix of levels of who is talking to who, you yeah. know. <laughs> and he was talking to the to Sarkozy, but also to, to the people watching. You know, so it was very interesting in terms of uh, analyze. You know, I mean, as a French teacher and literature teacher, I loved the, those scenes. You know, um, yeah. yeah, it was very interesting. We, we come to the next fragment, the, the last fragment, and to introduce it. Um, Hollande comes from 
a little town in the heartlands of France, Tulle, and this is where he waited the night of the, 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 the final countdown until it became clear that he would be the next president of France and Laurent Binet was at his side. Les Français, en ce 6 mai, so this is on the square of Tulle. So it gives you an idea. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 what was very curious about it was, to me, it seemed like the president of a s very small princedom was elected because we were sort of in the middle of nowhere. There, there, were, there were maybe 5,000 people on the, on the square, and then there was this president. But he seemed to be the becoming mayor or something like that. Well, I think this is... Uh this is tradition in France that uh, uh, any uh, any big uh, politician uh, has to uh, find a place which will be his roots, even if it's a bit artificial, you know. But uh, it was, um, uh, yeah, Sarkozy is different because he comes from Neuilly, which is next to Paris, so it wouldn't uh, make uh, any sense to, to do the yeah. same in, uh, in the suburb of Paris, you know. But it, it was important in terms of the uh, of communication, you know, like the roots, you know, like and uh, and also, I mean, the the that guy he's got um, he's got an interesting uh, story definitely because uh, as many uh, French presidents, uh, he had a very bad time, you know, like he was really a loser or uh, nobody would believe that he could become a president one day, you know, and uh, at a certain time. Uh, he was just um, uh, located in that town and in that area, so he wanted to uh, be grateful to those people who supported him, even when he was nobody, you know? Yeah. Uh, but then, I mean, um, uh, 30 minutes after, he uh, was running to the, to the airport, and uh, two hours after, he was uh, in the center of Paris, in La Bastille, and uh, yeah, and I yeah. know the story because I almost missed the plane. Yeah, <laughs> and I almost spent that very uh, night in Tulle. <laughs> that, no, a, a thing happened to Laurent Binet, uh, which never happens to any ordinary journalist, and which shows his uh, importance, as I may, as, if I may say so, because the the presidential plane which was waiting to to take off to Paris to celebrate on the Place de la Bastille. Waited for you because you were late. It's well, it's not very clear. Uh, if they, <laughs> I, I I caught the plane. This is all what I can say. And uh, the plane was a bit late. I don't know if it was for me. I mean, I was in contact with his uh, chief of communication, uh, who told me, "Yeah, you should hurry." Yeah, it was funny because I was in the car. I found very nice people who uh, agreed to drive me to the airport. Uh, Local people, you know, were just, uh -huh. they were nice. And they were um, driving fast. And I asked them uh, how many times uh, to, to the airport. They told me 20 minutes. Uh, I told, uh, so I was through the phone with the chief of communication. He told me, when you will be here? I told him 15 minutes. I lied. And he told me, it will be too late. <laughs> we, we go in 10 minutes. So it's, it sounded very bad. But finally... I, I, I got it. Uh, so I, I, I will never know if they waited for me or not. I, I, as I know Hollande, I suspect he wouldn't wait for me. Okay. You said about HHHH. -H -H -H. This is an infra novel. Yeah. That's, that's the word you use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you consider um, Rien ne se passe comme prévu also like an infra novel? I, I don't know I, what I meant with that world in front novel I wanted just I meant just that it looks like a novel you can read it as a novel and I wrote it as a novel using all the tools I can all the tools of a novel I can use but one which is fiction in fact it's even more complicated because from time to time I used fiction and I deconstructed uh, the fiction mm -hmm. chapters but well whatever um 
But then I discovered that American and English people, they've got a word for those kind of books. They call it uh, non-fiction novel, you know. And I think in both cases, you can... You, you can you can you can speak about non-fiction novel. I'm I'm okay with non-fiction novel, um, but in, in French I would say I mean the, the 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 proper word the neutral word would be récit. You know, like a story. You know, the, in both cases, it's uh, it, it, uh, this is two stories and two true stories. You know, so. Uh, non-fiction novel is okay, you know, but see if you can say story. If you want to say story, it's, it's good. It's simple. <laughs> well, one of the most important tools a novelist uses is uh, identification. H how do you uh, achieve identification with the main characters of both books when you don't allow yourself to um, use uh, psychology? I don't know. I mean, you tell me. You. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it works in H H H H. To me, I don't I, uh, manage to identify with Hollande. Uh, it works with you. you couldn't uh, identify with Hollande. <laughs> no, it's it's too technical. Let's say. I think. Um, well, I think it's it's a bit different between both books. Uh, I think in um, in the whole long book i am more present you know and yeah. if and you, you you can identify with me but it's very very um uh, it's a very dividing book you know because uh, my uh, my starting point is i talking from the i am i feel from the yeah. politically from the left side you know so uh, i guess you can identify if you are from the left side but then you can read it, yeah, you, you don't have to read it as a novel with a suspense or whatever. Uh, you can read it as a document, you know. I mean, uh, I read the book by Yasmina Reza about Sarkozy. Uh, and uh, in a way, I had a lot of criticism about the book in itself, but in a way it was interesting, you know, and uh, although I don't like Sarkozy, you know. So you can read it as a document or you can read it as a story or you can... Yeah, read it as um, uh, somebody involved in politics, you know, and with convictions. So I think there is different levels you can read it, you know. Um, yeah. The last question b before I give the floor to you. Um, I won't ask you whether you're disappointed with Hollande and his achievements, um, but I do want to ask you, um, you got in contact with him by means of uh, Valérie Triwaller, because he interviewed you being a journalist for Paris Match. She interviewed me as yeah, a journalist. Yeah, she interviewed you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you stay in contact with her? And how is she? Be yeah, for yeah. people in Holland, I think for, for many people in Holland, um, François Hollande only became well known <laughs> the last two months. <laughs> that is so French, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, she's the only one, uh, not the only one, but yeah, I, I'm still in contact with her. I'm not in contact with him. And well, she's not uh, very happy, but she's okay. She, she's, yeah, she's okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, now the floor is yours. So if there are any questions, there's a microphone. And please talk in the, in, in the microphone and... Um, if you want anything to say, don't forget to do it in the form of a question. That's important. <laughs> I'm wondering about the book of... You wrote Sorry. about Hollande. Um, <clears throat> does the book have an effect, and what kind of effect, afterwards on his image? My Can you book? tell... Your book, yes. No, I... <laughs> I don't think so because um, no, I don't think so. My book didn't have that power. Uh, it was not successful enough, and I think uh, this is we are so obsessed about politics in France and about our political people <laughs> that it's very, very um, complicated to change the image of um, of a political. Man, 
uh, what I what I've seen with uh, Hollande is the opposite of what is his image. You know, somebody weak, somebody soft, somebody uh, uh, with um, uh, uh, too kind. So now, of course, because of the story, it's, he, he doesn't look that nice, uh, such a nice guy <laughs> with uh, the story with Valérie Trierweiler. But he, he's still, he's got that image of somebody um, too weak, you know, which is not true at all. I mean, he's a, that guy is a killer, you know. He's a, and uh, when I was interviewed after the book was out, uh, anytime somebody asked me uh, in one word uh, wh what you would say about that guy, uh, my, answers, my answer was he's a machine. He's a machine, really, like a political machine. He's just obsessed by politics. He's got only one goal, his uh, political success, you know. He doesn't care really about anything else. Uh, and so, in that way, he's a machine, you know. We discovered uh, lately that he's also, also human. <laughs> But you, you know what I mean, you know, uh, and so he's, uh, uh, he's not, in fact, um, he can be very ungrateful with his friends, you know, he's not, he doesn't, uh, he, 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 he's not weak, definitely not, you know, really. So, uh, and I could see that, and all the journalists who could uh, follow him regularly could see that and knew that, you know, but although... Uh, he still had that image of somebody weak, you know. So it's very strange, you know, like the the, Which uh, the fantasy we have about political people, you know. Also because it was created by members of his own party. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes, I mean, it's uh, the 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 image. It's uh, the, the it's uh, politics is um, it's not only that, but it's a permanent uh, battle for image, you know, the image of your enemies and your image, you know, and uh, w when you. Uh, uh, the, um, he lost the, the battle of his own image, you know. He, he won other battles and he won the... the but also it, it helped him for the debate, for instance, because for the de that, that debate, it's, it's a huge event in France. We have one every uh, five years between the two finalists, you know, and it's, it's a big, big event. And, um, and it's... Usually, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's fierce, it's, uh, and we rem every five years we remember uh, some sequence of those debates, you know. And uh, it helped him because he was so underestimated that uh, Sarkozy, you know, he, um, uh, had to win clearly. Because if he didn't win clearly, it would be a kind of a draw. And... As Sarkozy should win because he was supposed to be so much better, it would be a defeat, you know. And it was a big surprise for many people that Hollande could be so aggressive, you know, and so fighting, you know. And at that time, people discovered that somebody they didn't know, you know. But then the, the, um, the media logic and the, 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 the logic of the storytelling made him, after a couple of weeks, he became, in the people's mind, weak again. But he didn't care, because <laughs> meantime, in the meantime, in, he was elected, you know. So the, the timing, he was very good with the timing, you know. He showed that he could be strong at the very right moment, you know. And then, yeah, okay, he's weak, but who cares? I mean, he's got five years uh, you know, to be president, so he cares, in fact. I mean, it's not true that he doesn't care. But he, he, he managed well with his image, which, which was a weakness, he, he, uh, he, man he, managed, uh, he managed it well, yeah. You, you had a question. Yeah, next question, please. You had already answered my question, but I have still a very small age. How old are you, Mr. Boulot? I have 41 years. Not at all, no. I mean, it's not a personal matter, and but I don't... To the monde, has everybody uh, understood the question? So it's asked his age, and, and then, uh, so your parents didn't uh, uh, live during the war. How come? No, but, uh, so this is the... Um, I guess this is... Uh, this can be, it doesn't have to be always, but this can be the magic of literature, you know, you don't have to leave something to, to write about it. 
but uh, my father is a history teacher. My grandfather was a war prisoner for um, uh, the, 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 time, the, the time of the war, I mean, for five years in Germany. Uh, and he, he also was a communist, so uh, which had a lot, uh, which has a lot of uh, implications. Implications, yeah. Uh, and also, but I mean, and my uh, my grandmother, my mother, they are they are they are Jewish. Actually, I've I mean, it's a fact. I mean, technically, uh, I am Jewish, you know, but I don't I I don't feel I've. No, I don't feel embarrassed to say it, you know, but I don't feel it was um, uh, decisive uh, in, the, in the fact I wrote th that book, you know. But it is a fact, you know, I can't deny that I, I am, uh, my mother is, uh, is a Jewish, so I don't know, it's very hard to, to uh, but I'm not obsessed by that, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, um, it, it can, I can spend weeks, I don't think I'm a Jewish, you know. Uh, but maybe it, 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 it's not totally uh, innocent, you know. I mean, it's it, maybe it has something to do with uh, with my story. I don't know. No, but there are others. There are others. You don't take note, but maybe for people it won't help. Talking in the mic is better, I assure you. I am fascinated by the fascination that you have for your generation for this war. Of course, it's inexhaustible. So she is fascinated by the fascination of his generation for the war. You answered. I mean, it's endless, and uh, I don't know how to say it in English. Uh, inexhaustible, inextinguishable. Something, something like that. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, how not to be fascinated by such a story, you know, and with such, uh, I mean, uh, it's the biggest tragedy of all the human history with, with a lot of awful, dreadful stories, a lot of heroical stories, you know, I mean, all the best and the worst of humanity are just uh, settled in, uh, in those few years of the Second World War, you know, so... I think my generation, but the next generation and the generation after the next generation, they will be fascinated by that time, you know. I think only two generations are in a special case, the generation of the war, the, 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 those who lived at that time and their children, you know, their children which who uh, could be uh, in a way, I mean, uh, had a strange feeling with that, with their parents who talked too much about it or we, who never talked about it. I mean, uh, uh, but in both cases, who could be um, disturbed, you know? But uh, the third generation is not anymore, you know, like we hear about that story, but we, know we are not disturbed because, uh, yeah, beca because this is not our parents' story, I think. Yeah, and it makes a big difference. So it means we are interested, but we are not, we don't feel blocked, you know, so. My generation. You, you speak about my generation. <laughs> I hope you will draw a lesson from it. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, uh, me too. Of course, but I mean, it's just uh, you are vote, You are voting, voting too. You know, so your generation, my, the next one, the just every generation should uh, sh should uh, take lessons of of history anyway, you know, but uh, we, we both know that uh, it's not always the case, you know, like it's... Uh, yes, unfortunately, I mean... Are there any other uh, when, when questions? I, <laughs> no, I mean, no, but it's... 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 Um, it's when you see, like, we spent two months about Dieudonné in France, you know, with, uh, like... Deciding if he's uh, anti-Semitic or not, you know, it's crazy. And this is uh, uh, um, is, this is exactly the case. Uh, like history didn't learn us anything, you know. And uh, yeah, it makes me sick because I mean, recently I just uh, I broke up with a very good friend of mine, a former st uh, student of mine, you know, who was very clever, who used to be very clever, and who. Uh, 
spent hours and hours explaining me that, well, Gidone is cool and uh, he's uh, uh, the, the jester, jester, the, the jest, the, the, what, what he does, like it's nothing, uh, nothing with the, 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 the gesture, yeah. Yeah, the, the Nazi jester and yeah. things like that. And it's just by mistake that some people, they did it in the Shoah Memorial or things like that. It makes me sick. And of course, I mean, this, I mean, what is that? Uh, um, uh, the point is, uh, you, well, you're right, learning history, of course. I mean, remember, not even not learning, but remembering history. There's it's, another it's, question. It's also here one reason why I wrote that book, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You seem to me like a happy man, but uh, did writing H, 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 H make you feel happy during the time you wrote the book? Well, <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, I see what you mean. Uh, you, you, of course, that was a heavy topic. But uh, if you think about it, uh, the, the <laughs> uh, at least in that story, uh, the, dead guy, the, the, the bad guy dies, uh, you know, and the, the, during, uh, I mean... There are so many awful stories during the Second World War, you know. I mean, my, my book is not about the genocide, in fact, you know. It's about the guy who planned the genocide and who was uh, murdered, which is very different, you know. So uh, my story uh, basically is a big adventure, you know. It's not like... Um, it's not like Schindler List or, and well, we, we, we could speak a lot about Schindler List or just for, forget that example, but it's not like Shoah, you know, I mean, I think, I think like Claude Lanzmann did working for 10 years uh, uh, on his film Shoah, that should have been very, very heavy, you know, and uh, my book is a bit, my, my book is a bit different. But that's true that, yeah, I mean, I wrote a chapter about it. I mean, I mentioned it in some chapter in my book, like my, you, you should have seen my room for years, like every year, you know, books about uh, Hitler, Himmler, Goebbels on the wall, uh, on the walls everywhere. It was a bit scary. And from time to time, I was dreaming about uh, Heidrich and it, it, was not, uh, it, was, it was not pleasant dreams at all. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, still, I mean, you know, my... my, my my goal was to, to follow the, that big adventure, that uh, amazing act of resistance of the parachutist, you know. Next question, please. Uh, do you think that in the, the second book, uh, that you say that the television debate was the main uh, thing he lost uh, uh, the, the election, Sarkozy. S -s -s Sorry? Yeah, that in the debate, that was kind of uh, the main uh, uh, cause for his defeat. But what I heard was that uh, also Sarkozy, the, the people from France, were a bit tired about his glamorous life and because there was a crisis and so on, so on. Was that also, do you think, a part, or was the, the television interview mostly the, the key uh, turning point? Uh, why, why did he lose the election? Was it because of this debate or were people uh, tired of his style? No, of course. I mean, they were tired. I mean, people were tired of, yes, of course. They were tired of him, you know, and some people, they were tired of his style. I mean, me, for instance, I, I really don't care about the, the, the style of, uh, Hollande or Sarkozy. I mean, uh, just the guy. If I if I like the, the the his politics, he can he can look uh, he can behave as a jerk. I don't mind, you know. Uh, so and it's really the, not the, the the question of his style. But but I mean, this is my opinion. But it's true that people and especially people from the right wing, so from his board, his side, they didn't like his style. That's true. Um, so nobody will never know that. I mean, I, I don't. I I wouldn't say that he lost because of this debate, you know. But what I say is he lost this debate, you know. This debate as a match, you know. He lost that match. Doesn't mean that you know anyway he would lose whatever happens, even if it was a draw, even if he, if he would win the debate. Yes, you're right, people. People were fed up with Sarkozy, and it was time to change because the, the right wing 
uh, was leading France for a long time, you know, like more than 10 years, I think. So anyway, you know, I, get, I, I think he couldn't win, you know. Uh, uh, but so this is two different things, you know. Do you think basically that it was Hollande who won or was it Sarkozy who lost? Well, uh, no, it's neither of them. I mean, it's history, you know, it's a cycle of history, you know. So um, Hollande didn't make mistakes. No. And uh, Sarkozy had, um, had a strategy which was um, to, to, to stress the right wing's um, d'appuyer sur les, les um, themes, the right wing's themes. He emphasized the, the, the right wing yeah. themes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so like uh, to, 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 um, to, to make a campaign very close to the, to the, the far right wing, you know, um, which was, I mean, very shocking for me, but also for many people. And uh, uh, yeah, it was a big risk. I mean, and it didn't pay, you know. I mean, maybe, I mean, I, 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 um, I understand more or less the idea, like, okay, like we, we will focus about the themes like police, security, foreigners, and things like that. And then all the left, the traditional left uh, wing ideas, uh, people won't care. And so we won't, uh, the, the, the election won't uh, be decided. Uh, I mean, like we will play on my field and not on his field. So it's uh, on uh, the theory is uh, all right. But then, I mean, when your field is close to the far right, <laughs> then it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a problem, you know. Um, no, I think, I, I think Hollande was good, you know. Um, I think Sarkozy, yes, he's got his own style and he played as uh, he, he used to play. And so, yeah, this is very strange. So, like, we uh, French people, but I think it's the same everywhere, we, are, we have short memory. We are very, uh, what we like one year, five years after, we hate it, you know. So, uh, I, uh, yeah, well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> the next question, please. Um, Maybe that is not a good question, I don't know, but can you tell us something about your next book? Uh, <laughs> Yes, I can tell you a few things. Um, it will be it will be settled uh, during the eighties, and it will uh, it will have. So it is uh, history again in a way. You know, I mean, eighties. It's all it's yeah already history, um, and uh, it will be again about the the complicated relation between uh, reality and fiction, but this time on the opposite angle, on the, on the fiction side, you know, like I will try to, to play with, uh, with the real and to like, to like twisting a rope, you know, the, the rope of history or the rope of real until you, 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 uh, you see when it, it breaks, you know, so it will be something like that. And it will have a political background during the 80s and it will start in Paris, but it will be then all around the world. Thank you, thank you. So will Mitterrand play a role in it? Yeah, he should be, he should show up, yeah. <laughs> Good question. Uh, well, first one point on your previous question, whether Hollande lost or Sarkozy lost, or Hollande win or Sarkozy win, there's one thing we should add is that Strauss-Kahn was in the race and was burned out. With all that, maybe the outcome would have been very different. Anyway, um, you know, grew up as a French, I've learned to be very suspicious about politicians. So when I, read, when I see the title of your book, can you say whether things really happened like they were supposed to? Or did they really lose control on where the image is going now of, of the current president? Yes, well, uh, so uh, the, uh, uh, it's funny because that, that the title is um, it, it is about something uh, Hollande said about Dominique Strauss-Kahn when he was asked, "What did you think 
the very day you learned about the, the Sofitel affair, you know, the Sofitel scandal of Strauss-Kahn. And his answer, his answer was, I thought nothing happens uh, according to the plan. Nothing never happens according to the plan. Uh, so I thought it's a beautiful sentence, actually. And it works for... Uh, not only for the campaign, you know, like I, I like that. Yeah, it's not just um, con uh, conjectural, uh, just f f for, but it's for, uh, it works for life, you know. <laughs> so I like that. And of course, now when you, you, you can see how difficult it is for him and how, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, how he, uh, he's not in a good position, it is a premonitoire, premonitory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, also, um, yes, I mean, afterward, it's always easy to say, well, but of course we knew it would happen this way, you know. And so to come back to the, the, the question of what we said with uh, Mister, you know, like, in fact, I remember it was very interesting, like the, the Holland's team, they were confident, you know, they knew that, yes, okay. If everything is um, going well, they, they should win. You know? But they said something interesting. They said, the only thing which can make us, make us lose is if there is uh, an Islamic attentat. And it happened. You know? So, I mean, uh, but it didn't make them lose. You know? So, you see that, in a way, nothing happened uh, as it should be, twice, you know, like, you know, like they, they, they were praying that, uh, please, no Islamic attentat, but it happened, you know, but it was not enough to make them lose, you know. So, you know, you know when, you, when you leave it live, it's, nothing is clear and you don't know anything. Afterward, yeah, I mean, you, you, you know that, yeah, of course, uh, like uh, Italy uh, had to, uh, Spain had to win the, the last uh, World Cup. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and just uh, everybody knew. But no, b before the match, nobody knew, especially you, <laughs> uh, Dutch people. <laughs> we'll be back. Um, but do you think... I was supporting the, the Dutch, I had to say. Thank you very much. But not until, until the end, I hope. <laughs> Um, I, I wonder, do you think it would have a, another outcome with uh, Dominique Strauss-Kahn? Uh, definitely. And, and the, in, in what way? Well, I don't want to be cynical or suspicious, but what I found out with my Dutch entourage or environment is when the story broke out, my first thought was, this is probably a setup. Because that's how I grew up as a French and... Mm -hmm. Politicians are known to manipulate image and to destroy their, their enemies. So that said, I thought that if, it, that if that didn't happen, although I knew this guy was like that for a mm -hmm. long time, but it was not public, if he would still be there, he would probably be the current president. I think this is where he was heading. And this is probably why it becomes suspicious because either the right wing and the left wing didn't want that guy, but he was obviously too popular and too dangerous for any side. So yes, I think it would be now the president if he was so the So question, the yeah. question is, yeah, yeah. The, does I, suspicion play a big role in uh, French politics? Yeah, maybe. Well, uh, I, I, I'll answer to, to you, or I, I'll argue with you. <laughs> I don't think he would be. I think if he was not um, caught in the Sofitel, maybe Sarkozy would be the president because and that's why I think it was, there was no setup at all. Because yourself, you say, you knew how he was, you know, it was, uh, you know, people talked about how he could behave, you know. And um, I think if it was a setup, I mean, the, 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 it helped Holland, you know, but Holland, I mean, at that time, Holland would have set up such a thing. He had no power at all at that time. So what would... The, the guy who could, I mean, who had interest to set up and who had the power to set up would be Sarkozy. But it was much too early, you know. I mean, if uh, Sarkozy wanted to be effective, he should have set up him at the, uh, during the last three months of the campaign and that it would be such a blow and uh, then th there couldn't be a uh, substitute, you know. So Sarkozy would be elected in that case. Um, then, 
uh, another reason I think it was not a setup is because for every woman or every girl, there is something wrong. You know, like Nafita, Nafisa to Diallo, it was a setup. She was greedy, you know. Uh, Tristan Bannon, the young writer, she was crazy, you know, out of her mind, you know. Uh, the, the, the girl in the uh, FME, the MIF, the, the yeah, 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 yeah. She met. was, you know, like an archivist maybe, or she was a colleague, it was not clear. But so, I mean, every woman, there is a problem, you know, either she's crazy or she's bad. Or, but at the end, you know, there, there, there is a lot of <laughs> women with troubles, you know, but, and, and one innocent guy. <laughs> It's the, the, you, you know, uh, the, 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 the strategy of the defense of Strauss, the, 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 the people who defended strauss they used it, you know, case by case, case by case, by case. Of course, you always find something, you know, like the, the, that girl, yeah, something is wrong, something. But when, when it's, you know, 10 girls, 10 girls, 10 women, <laughs> you can start to believe that maybe the problem is not the girls, but the guy, you know. <laughs> So I think it's just he, he that, that fucked I up. I agree. I never said that guy was should have been president. I said no, the, no. The timing the is result, sometimes yeah. a bit suspicious. But I think this I is think, why it raises. I think the timing thing. shows that it was not a setup. I think. Okay. But Fair this enough. kind of discussions give you an impression why uh, French politics is so much fun. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> because there's always a lot of suspicions and things going on that uh, uh, you have your doubts about. Uh, next question. But, but we crossed some level uh, rec recently. Yeah. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we went further. <laughs> I, I think we, we move on to the last question. Uh, about Valérie, again. Uh, she wasn't popular in France. So the fact that she left, is that good or bad for Hollande? <laughs> yeah, well, I think um, it won't change anything, you know. And I think this is very, very um, uh, disgusting from Holland's team. I heard some, some, some people from his team said, yeah, politically it's good, you know, but, well, I mean, okay, we are just, okay, we are French, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe that we are really involved with politics, you know, and uh, of course, I mean, we like gossiping as uh, everybody and we, we, we love the story, but I, and she was not popular. It's a fact, you know, but I think it, it doesn't change one person uh, of uh, the, the, how do the sondages, the, the polls, the, the polls, yeah, the polls. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, Hollande is Hollande and Trevailer is Trevailer, you know. And uh, I mean, like if uh, if he if he um, if he solved the unemployment in France, you know, nobody would care about uh, about his wife or his mistress or whatever, you know. So um, and <laughs> the I mean, I, I, last time I checked, he didn't uh, his uh, popularity didn't jump. Uh, last month, you know, since he uh, dumped her, you know, so I really don't think uh, it will have any effect in one way or another, really. It would be too simple, you know, like just, yeah, I mean, and you know how it works, why she was, why she wasn't popular, I mean, you know, Carla Bruni, Carla Bruni, she was not popular, not really, uh, at, uh, not as, uh, uh, as that point, I agree, you know, but why she was uh, so not popular? Because she was, you know, y y y you don't have to um, uh, understand the, the opposite way. You know, I mean, uh, Carla Bruni was not popular be when she married Sarkozy, you know. And also Valérie Terweiler was not popular also because she was with Holland. But, uh, but there's, a, there's a big difference between the esteem from the French for Carla Bruni. I think most French thought she did well as a first lady. And Valérie Triwaya. But, I mean, she, she can't, now she can't sell enough tickets to, to, I mean... Uh, no, but, to, that's to, to a a as a, but that's a career as a singer. That's, that's another story. Yeah, but, I mean, why, why it collapsed? I mean, you know, I'm just... Uh, I, just uh, I, I used to listen to She didn't Carla have Bruni time before. to exercise. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, she was... It, it burned her as, a, as an artist that she was, yeah. uh, she was married with uh, Sarkozy. I mean... You know, I mean, in, it's it's so uh, divided in France that you just 
uh, from the beginning you are married with uh, uh, some uh, high-ranking political guy, yeah. you just uh, half of the population hates you. And, and then she, she crossed the magical border from being a sort of leftish artist. Yeah, yeah, uh, the treason. <laughs> and marrying the, 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 the evil beast on the right wing. Yeah, yeah, that was unforgettable. But you yeah. could say the same with... Uh, I mean, Holland didn't need to marry anyone to, to, no. to betray no, <laughs> the no. left wing. That's okay, right. that's another story. <laughs> we, are, we are into gossip, gossiping now, so maybe it's, um, it's time for, um, to stop. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. And may I thank Laurent Binet, Ariane Korteweg, for this wonderful conversation. May I thank the Alliance Francaise uh, Leid uh, for making this evening possible, the Library of The Hague, the publishing houses that took care of the books and helped us getting these people here. The books are for sale there, with signature of your wish and anything you want them to write into it. Don't forget Ariane de Geus, because you're a writer, uh, uh, you're, you're writer yourself, and uh, your book is there as well. So, a Dutch view on uh, France. Ariane ah, Korteweg's book. Uh, okay, and thank you, audience. The next edition of this series will be uh, end of March, Friday, 28th of March, where we and the audience will, during the Turkish election campaign, we're continuing on politics and elections, elect the best Turkish poem written ever in history. That's a challenge to you, too. Thank you very much. Applause